Carmen Rodilla and uh, Alcorcat Institute of Heritage Science, uh, belongs to the FSI in Santiago de Compostela. And today, well, in the same line that uh, the empirical study uh, previous, uh, I try to explain to you a uh, little preliminary work on understanding user behavior in textual analysis. We work a lot with, uh, with textual analysis in digital environment, so this is more or less our uh, main work. Uh, so this is the, more or less the, the agenda. And uh, well, the, the main idea is that uh, there, there are uh, uh, a lot of resources, textual resources online. Uh, so there is an exponential increase in digital text availability, uh, not only in institutional repositories, but also in uh, research gate or academia edu or this kind of scientific uh, social networks, and also in, in the cloud in general. No? There are a lot of texts. So our idea is more or less to uh, help researchers in digital humanities, which is our uh, main uh, topic in, at the Institute, in order to analyze this text uh, for research. So um, uh, due to this uh, exponential increase, uh, there are a lot of uh, development in software methods in order to uh, uh, do a textual analysis in an automatic way. Okay? Uh, not only automatic, and automatic, and also manual in, in all forms, but we work a lot in this kind of uh, the software method for uh, textual analysis. But we uh, uh, detect that there is uh, a lack of empirical data about what kind of changes produce this kind of uh, <coughs> methods or uh, software methods for textual analysis in the research? What kind of changes in textual analysis? When we uh, analyze manually, it's the same idea that we uh, analyze with an automatic tool or not. This is more or less the, the idea, okay? So, uh, we also find that uh, there are a lack of empirical uh, data because there are not a specific method to measure these kind of things. What kind of uh, measure we, we can employ? So, as I told you before, there are different methods uh, from manually based, so for instance, textual editors for labeling, or maybe mm, uh, annotation, intake, and other kind of systems. There are other semi automatic techniques, for instance, discourse analysis, which is our main uh, research interest uh, here now, and also automatic ones, uh, natural language processing techniques. Uh, Entity recognition, uh, part of a speech, etc., etc., and also sentiment analysis and other kind of algorithms. So we have all this uh, variability in methods. Uh, but uh, our main idea is that uh, we need to strike in some way, manually, in synthetic or automatic, the syntactic structure of the text, thematic aspect of the text, but also this kind of cognitive processes. For instance, there are causal reasoning inside the test, or there are uh, some uh, argumentation in terms of contrast inside the test, this kind of things, which is very important in research and uh, mainly humanities. Because, for instance, uh, some uh, studies show that uh, in actually historians, studies, etc., that we work on, uh, the main uh, ideas are causal relationship in the text. So it's very important for us, this kind of things. Okay? So our goal is to know more about how uh, our users uh, analyze text on the digital uh, context, uh, focusing on uh, structured kind of things, causal relationships, constructs, etc. And, uh, and we find that the, there are a lack of empirical studies in order to know what happens here, how uh, the use of these techniques is affecting the analysis conducted by researchers in human mistakes. It is possible to measure the quality of the textual analysis or not, what kind of cognitive structures are identified in the text using these methods. Uh, so we uh, start to review and we find that uh, some studies show that thinking about protocols uh, are very useful in this kind of case. What is thinking about the protocols? Uh, it's try to, um, to uh, ask to our experts in the field, in this case in humanities, but could be in other uh, domain, okay? To ask uh, in to voice the words in their mind, okay, aloud. So, what are you thinking when you are analyzing a text? This kind of approaches. Uh, it's from uh, cognitive psychology, so it's used specifically for things uh, like uh, strict cognitive strategy, so memory or problem solving, etc. And uh, there are uh, cases of success in humanities, for instance, in ethnography, also in transcription, in tourist, etc. So the idea is to ask people to think uh, aloud and to uh, express what kind of textual analysis are doing at the, at the moment of the textual analysis, okay? Uh, so, we start to do it. We, uh, uh, in the paper, is uh, all the detail. We 
create a, a little bit a, a little methodology in order to uh, structure a little bit our experiments. And for instance, there are interesting things that we have to uh, take into account when we uh, develop this kind of uh, empirical study. So, for instance, maybe we, we need to uh, decide what kind of cognitive level uh, we are asking for our professionals. So, for instance, if our text analysis is very difficult or is very easy when we are asking to our professionals. Or, for instance, uh, we need to record the, the sessions in order to extract as more information as possible. So we uh, uh, record in video all the sessions in, uh, with our humanities uh, researchers. Um, and uh, we try to identify uh, fatigue control effects because it's very, very... Uh, um, there are a lot of fatigue when you are talking aloud a lot about what are you thinking when you are analyzing a text. Uh, there are these kind of things. So we start to do it, and we plan an experiment with uh, some uh, with this uh, goal in mind. And the idea is our initial hypothesis was: okay, discourse analysis, which is our method uh, that we are working on right now, does not allow the cognitive processes identification in human social context. Con uh, context. So the idea is: uh, we ask uh, to uh, six. Uh, uh, to 20 uh, humanities professionals from three different institutions, from Schunter Galicia, <coughs> from Institute of Heritage Science, and from a uh, private institution in Italy. So in order to have public and pri private sector uh, people, uh, to uh, analyze text and to say, uh, uh, using thinking about what are uh, they thinking about this text problem. So they uh, are characterizing 20 discourse fragments from different uh, repositories, from the SIC and from Archaeological Data Service also. And the idea is to know what happens here. So uh, some ideas about the empirical uh, study. No previous knowledge about the discourse uh, fragments, so people, uh, the researchers, don't know previously the text. Okay, they don't know about it. Uh, they uh, asked to um, uh, perform an initial questionnaire about, about the professional profile, some experience, previews about this kind of uh, uh, questionnaires, etc. Uh, the participants were received one by one in individual sessions uh, of uh, between 45 minutes and one hour, which is a lot because you have to think aloud most uh, an hour, so it's quite uh, difficult. And uh, each of them was given an explanation of the discourse analysis techniques in order to analyze the test, and also the cognitive processes that we can't identify. So, for instance, to take your test and uh, search for causal relationships, construct uh, relationships, etc. Okay. And uh, they also were told uh, that they would be recorded. Okay, in order to ask for permission, etc. Uh, they were asked to characterize the fragment of the discourse, describe and allow the reasons for the choices and all that. Okay? And the results, which is the very most uh, interesting part. Uh, as you can see, this is the, the, the answers, the, the responses with two options, and uh, most of them are agree, but uh, when you have introduced more options, uh, there is more or less the same uh, agreement in the analysis. It's very interesting because in, in an initial uh, idea we thought, well, maybe uh, each professional analyzing their way and maybe there are not coincidences in the textual analysis, but it is, there are coincidences. It's very interesting in humanities because uh, if you ask for professionals, they know, no, 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 I, I have my own analysis and uh, maybe my partner is not agree with me, but at the end, it's not so di different, okay? Uh, this is the uh, uh, results for the uh, 20 fragments, and as you can see in the percentage, there are an acceptable coincident percentage in textual analysis, okay? So, could be interesting to continue a study in this line, because we know that it's an initial study, only 20 fragments, on, only 6 to 20 professionals, only 3 institutions, different institutions, so we, uh, we need, need to continue this And uh, this course analysis, uh, we think that maybe it's be able and as it passes to work in a semi-automatically way to identify this kind of causal relationships, uh, which is very important. So as a conclusion,
conclusion we present here in, uh, in this uh, track uh, our empirical studies uh, on how humanities professionals analyze textual sources using discourse analysis uh, in a semi-automatic uh, way and our methodology is a way in order to apply thinking aloud for humanities. Uh, show us that uh, maybe thinking aloud could be interesting because it uh, presents a high degree of agreement in the community with an average uh, around uh, 66%. And, uh, of course, the study shows other non-formalized aspects uh, that could be interesting for us, for instance, disagreements uh, in some kind of cognitive processes, specifically in some of them. Uh, for future, uh, we need more empirical works with humanities professionals of all kinds, linguistic, archaeologists, historians, anthropologists, etc. We are very um, interested in uh, work. Uh, with them, uh, in order to evaluate all the semi-automatic and automatic textual analysis. <laughs> so maybe professionals using uh, natural language processing techniques, maybe <coughs> professionals using manually annotation techniques, this kind of uh, studies, okay? So uh, to continue testing and using thinking aloud maybe for this kind of studies. So if you are interested in empirical approaches with professionals in humanities, please contact me here or at the end because I'm looking for people that I'm just thinking. So thank you.